Well, I think we can all agree we've been through a lot this last year and a half with COVID-19. As stay-at-home orders are being lifted and things are starting to open back up, everyone's finally getting the chance to return to social interactions again. For many people, this means we're learning to re-engage in interpersonal situations that we haven't needed to in a long time. Whether it be meeting in person with family or friends, or going back to work in person, there are many situations we haven't had to navigate nearly as much since the pandemic began. One important thing we can do for ourselves during this time is be assertive about our needs and boundaries as we begin to reconnect with others. Hi everyone, I'm Victoria Ewan and I'm a clinical psychology resident at Sullivan and Associates Clinical Psychology. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how we can communicate more effectively with others. Before we get started, I invite you to subscribe to this channel. And if you're watching on YouTube, click the alert notification so that when we make more videos like this one, you'll get notified. So let's talk communication. You might be familiar with the four types of communication, assertive, passive, aggressive, and passive aggressive communication. The key difference between these types is whose needs are being made a priority. So let's go into this in a little more detail. In assertive communication, both the needs of the speaker and the needs of the listener are held at the same level of importance in the conversation. In passive communication, only the needs of the listener are being considered. So when I'm being passive, I won't bring up my needs and I'll focus entirely on yours. In aggressive communication, only the needs of the speaker are being included. So when I'm being aggressive, I ignore your needs, and I'm only willing to discuss mine. In passive-aggressive communication, the speaker appears to be considering the needs of the listener, but they're really not. So when I'm being passive-aggressive, I give the appearance that I'm focused on your needs, but I really care about my own needs more. We likely all know someone who almost always engages in one of these types of communication styles, and you can immediately call to mind what your interactions with those people look like. As you might expect, the most effective type of communication is assertive communication. When I say it's the most effective, I mean that being assertive in our interactions with others increases the likelihood of getting what we want while maintaining our relationships in a healthy way. Becoming more assertive has many benefits beyond just improving our relationships. A literature review by Speed, Goldstein, and Goldfried in 2018 indicated there's research dating back to the 70s showing that increased assertiveness is associated with improved self-esteem and self-concept and decreased symptoms of anxiety and depression. The review also indicated that outcomes from assertiveness training are comparable to other evidence-based treatments, such as cognitive behavioral therapy. While many of you may have heard assertive communication and may even know that this is the most effective type, it's easy to be unclear on how exactly to go about being assertive with others. Difficulty knowing how to engage in assertive communication often comes from how we were raised or how we were socialized by peers. It may also relate to personality factors or mental health difficulties like anxiety and depression. Some people have been taught that being assertive is actually aggressive because it can result in confrontation. People with anxiety often worry about others' reactions and those with depression may think that they're incapable or unworthy of getting their needs met. These people often believe that engaging in a more passive communication is the more effective way to go. When really, more often than not, assertiveness would be the better option. Others engage in aggressive communication as it often leads to others giving in to their demands. But they may not realize that they're potentially hurting their relationships in the process, ultimately resulting in their needs not being met long term. So how can we be more assertive with the people in our lives? Here are four strategies you can try. First, try to be mindful in your interactions with others. Try to truly listen to what the other person is saying, rather than listening to respond, as we all tend to do. It can be hard, but it's really important. Also, be mindful of the topic of conversation. Be aware if it's starting to shift unintentionally so you can refocus back on the initial discussion. Engaging in mindfulness exercises in your day-to-day -day life outside of social contexts can help you improve this skill and make it easier to be mindful when you're interacting with others. Second, be clear about your wants and needs. Don't assume people know what you're thinking and feeling. There's no such thing as mind reading. 
People are rarely as aware of our internal experiences as we expect them to be. Unless you have clearly stated what you want the person to know, believing they should have known, in most situations is unrealistic. Third, aim to focus on your feelings and experiences. Try to avoid commenting on other people's feelings and behaviors and resist the urge to play the blame game. One simple way to do this is using what we call I statements. For example, I feel uncomfortable and anxious when you don't call before coming over. It's a much more assertive statement than you never call before coming over. The second statement comes across as blaming and aggressive. This increases the likelihood that the other person will react defensively and that the conversation won't be as effective as it could be. The second statement also includes what we might call all or nothing or black and white thinking. It's coming through in the language. Rarely does someone do something always or never. It's usually somewhere in between the two. Using this type of language goes against my fourth and final strategy for assertive communication. When sharing your reflections of others, be as objective as possible. Avoid describing what the other person is doing based on the emotions you're feeling at the time. While your emotions are always valid and worthy of sharing, when discussing others' behavior, it's more effective to describe it as objectively as possible. So for example, you don't care about my feelings is a statement about your interpretation of how the person's behaving, and it may be based on feelings of hurt or anger. A more assertive statement might be, when I share my feelings with you, you start watching TV or leave the room. It's a description of the behavior that is occurring rather than what you think the behavior means. The second statement avoids potentially misinterpreting the behavior and gives the other person a chance to explain why they're acting the way they are. In the same way, you've only called me once before coming over this month and you've been over four times is a much more accurate statement than the one I shared earlier, where I said that they never call before coming over. Describing things as accurately as possible allows you to avoid sharing your assumptions. Otherwise, you're more likely to end up talking about whether or not your assumptions were true, rather than what you were trying to discuss, which is your needs and feelings in the relationship. It's important to note that no matter how assertive we are, we can't guarantee that people will give us what we need or respect our boundaries. Being assertive only increases the likelihood that we'll be heard and resultantly get our needs met. The other person doesn't want to be supportive and respectful, no amount of assertiveness will change that. In this case, consistently engaging in assertive communication allows us to distance ourselves from the person or end the relationship in a way that maintains our own self-respect and still respects the other person. All right. I threw a lot of information at you there, so let's do a quick review. The first thing I said was that the most effective way to communicate with others is to be assertive. Then I discussed four ways you can help ensure you're being assertive with others. Here they are again for you. First, be mindful during the conversation. Listen carefully to what the other person is saying and pay attention to how the conversation is going and where it's going. Second, Avoid assuming people are mind readers. State what your feelings and needs are clearly because chances are people are less aware of them than you think. Third, focus on your experience. Share how you feel about a situation rather than focusing on the other person's behavior. And fourth, objectively describe others' behaviors when you need to. Do your best to describe exactly what happened as accurately as you can without including your interpretation. That's it. I hope you found these strategies on how to be more assertive helpful. If you did, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button below. And if you ring the bell, you'll be notified the next time we release a video. And of course, feel free to like and share the video as well as leave a comment. If you're experiencing challenges implementing the strategies described in this video, please contact us at Sullivan & Associates Clinical Psychology. Thank you for watching.